Welcome to We Drink and We Farm Things. This is the farm comedy podcast that is an adult happy hour for the farming community. We drink adult beverages, talk about the ups and downs of farming things, and give zero fucks about not having the perfect farm life. We keep it real with you and share the mistakes we've made and what we've learned so you can feel less alone in this farm thing. We drink things, we farm things. things. We drink and farm things. Hey there, Bev. What you drinking today? Um, so this is going to surprise zero people. It coffee. is coffee <laughs> <laughs> with fresh squeezed goat milk in hey, my goat mug. Go. Yes. And all of that is just on theme. So please forgive me <laughs> for my yeah. repetitiveness of <laughs> coffee with goat milk. <laughs> you know what though? You are using a different mug. Like I don't think you've used the same mug back to back. So mm-hmm. at least there's that. I'm trying. I'm trying very, very hard. (laughs) (laughs) So what are you drinking over there? I am drinking water. Mm, Refreshing. Yes. Out of one of our silly pints. Yeah. Yeah, We only have a few more of this uh, blue Arctic blue color. So yeah. Go grab them while you can. Yeah, for sure. Just, just water today. Real boring. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong with staying hydrated. It's important no. for your health yeah. and the baby's health. And yes, no, water is life. It's boring, but necessary. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> our drink peep this episode is our friend Ashley Kiernan, and she is at Ashley Kiernan over on the Instagram. So cheers, Lenny. Cheers. All right. So today's dive bar, um, we will be diving into stinky male goat odor. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) We're going to get real stinky here, Um, specifically around a pheromone in male goat or odor that drives lady goats wild. Mm hmm. It sure does. It makes Um, us go. (laughs) <laughs> it's such a distinctive smell like yes. I don't want to say well I guess no I do kind of want to say this it's kind of like skunk yeah you know what I mean yes. like it's, it's a little skunky. musty and like it lingers <laughs> yes yes and it sticks to you too mm-hmm. um so I mean, today we're going to just get into some research about the stink and the purpose of the stink. I will say this research is it's in, in the realm of agriculture research. A lot of the stuff that I tend to find is from like early eighties or before they don't tend to do the same test over and over and over again in animals like they might do in people. So, um, this research is from 2014. I wasn't able to find any follow-up studies. Um, and you'll figure out why that's important as we get into the information, but I still thought it was so interesting. It might just be kind of fun to talk through the purpose behind the stink. Yeah. Well, I think that sometimes when you have a purpose for why something is, it just, makes it easier to deal with, you know, or decide yeah, you don't I don't know deal about with that <laughs> <laughs> with the stinky male ghost, just wait until it is like hot as balls in August. And like the rut starts mm-hmm. like right now, it's not terrible because it's still kind of cooler out, but once it starts getting hot and they kind of take that break over spring and summer where it's not so bad and then fall, it's like game on mm-hmm. and it's so bad. Well, and my boys are getting linear appraised in August. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to have to load them up, um, and take them somewhere, but I will have a trailer by then. I have, I have someone on the line searching for one for me that has dividers in it because <laughs> I can't take the ladies right. and the men at the same time, um, without a divider. Um, but, uh, the nice thing about the linear appraisal is I will shave everyone to make them look their best. And I have heard that that helps cut down on the amount of stink yeah. that hangs around. <laughs> yeah. When they have their big, long beard, 
they aim their pee there for mm-hmm. certain, for certain. Um, so yes, that, that would make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, today we're going to talk about obviously that pheromone, but a little bit of research into how that pheromone actually could trigger, uh, lady goats into ovulating. So that kind of translates to, they like the the stink and we're going to kind of get into the research behind that. Three of the research is really just kind of a theory that exposure to male goat hair can make female goats ovulate. And this actually preps them for, for mating. So this study was done by Ken Murata and the colleagues from the University of Tokyo. They wanted to know why smelly goat hair might be responsible for that sixth event. Ooh, (laughs) I like it. So this might um, bring some credence to why you would want to say, ask a breeder to rub a washcloth on their um, buck and then put it in like a jar or plastic baggie for you and give it to you to rub on your female goats to see if you can't get them to uh, go into heat so you can take them to breed. Yeah. I haven't had to go to those lengths. I have the opposite problem here where they just get knocked up because they smell each other 24 seven. Listen, <laughs> I chained the gate between them finally, because I just had so many break-ins. I don't know if I'm going to end up with surprise babies, but probably, <laughs> but I was like, forget it. I chained it and locked it. <laughs> there you go. <sighs> All right. So the researchers show that a host of compounds can, fa- can be found in the billy goats rough. The strongest of these are four. Eth- okay. I should have Googled these scientific names before we got on here, but I didn't. So just bear with me, people. Four ethyl lock needle, which produced pulses in the female goat brain that could promote ovulation. And the results may provide uh, clues that pheromones and other species as well could play the same role. This might not just be exclusive to goats, mm. but you know, goats are, can be very smelly when they're peeing on their faces and then their hair and beyond. So that's kind of like the rough synopsis of the study. Yeah. So you might be wondering like, how did they go about studying this? Well, (laughs) to isolate the potential pheromones in goat hair, um, the team constructed a special goat hat containing a material (laughs) that would absorb the volatiles and chemicals that are a vapor at room temperature. So think of the worst hat you could possibly imagine. (laughs) Yeah. I don't even, I wish there were pictures, but there were not. (laughs) So, uh, while there are no pictures of it, (laughs) Unfortunately. (laughs) Yeah. So sad about that. Uh, The analysis of the compounds that were absorbed by it showed that male goats exude a complex cocktail of chemicals from the head and chemicals that castrated male goats can't make. So that's why your weathers don't have this smell (laughs) or attract ladies like uh, the dudes do. And then what the scientists did was they took female goats and measured the electrical signals in their brains associated with firing neurons. So they were looking at what is called the arcuate nucleus of the hypothalamus, which is an area that releases hormones. Um, and the hormones are like, uh, gondotropin releasing hormones, um, or GNRH. Um, because GNRH signals the release of luteinizing hormone. So goat breeders, you will recognize luteinizing lute is one of the things, um, that you can, um, inject into your goats to stimulate ovulation. Um, I forget what else it is used for. It's a hormone. It's, it, it's a common hormone that is used by breeders when they need it. Um, And that in turn plays a role in making female goats and humans ovulate. So there you go. (laughs) So when female goats, which the sweet, stinky pheromones from the male goat, uh, Murata and the colleagues showed that there was a rhythmic spiking of GNRH signals in the goat's brain and it increased and became faster and larger. 
So as spiking of GnRH pulses increased, a uh, luteinizing hormone release could increase as well. This would mean that a whiff of the manly goat smell makes lady goats getting ready to roll in the hay. <laughs> pun intended i'm sure <laughs> you know what's funny is goats don't roll when they do it <laughs> no no the only time i've seen my goats roll around is if they have an itch on their back or if my male goats are being super dramatic because i'm trimming their hooves and mm. they just fall over i was gonna say mine fall over when i try to lead them I put a, a, a lead oh, on their how faces dare you? and then i <laughs> go and they like act like they died. It's the craziest thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So dramatic. So uh, Stephen liberal liberalist. Uh, I don't know how to say his last name. I'm so sorry, Stephen. Um, he's a cell biologist at Harvard university. He says that the results are important for the field of pheromone response. So, um, the team can record directly from neurons in the brain and see a response to a particular pheromone in the periphery, he says. Uh, no one's done that experiment before, so he finds it very exciting. Um, but he notes that because the study was performed in female goats with their ovaries removed, which is a way to make sure that they're not already in rut, um, the researchers were unable to confirm whether exposure to the four edilop tunnel <laughs> actually caused ovulation. That's that word that you were struggling with earlier. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No judgment. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next step he said would be to see if it actually affected the reproductive state directly. So I'm taking it that this is what you were referring to yes. and why we needed some follow-up research. They used female goats that didn't have ovaries. So there was no way to measure whether they actually ovulated after exposure right, right. to Did the it male just chemicals put them in the mood like humans can obviously be in the mood when they're not ovulating mm-hmm. and if i smell my husband that's not going to trigger ovulation um <laughs> well, maybe it does <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't think it does okay. because we've done extensive research on ovulation and humans and how okay. that works and the timing around that but, you know, it would be interesting to know if maybe goats are a little different and maybe it does trigger. Um, but you do tend to see goats with ovaries, at least kind of fall into the same cycle over and over again. And if mm-hmm. they stop going into heat, you're kind of like, oh crap. Okay. Or, oh, yay. If you're planning it, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I don't usually have an, oh, yay here. It's like a, ah, oh, man. Um, <laughs> because like I said, they just go wild. But that, you know, I think the smell, at least we know now, gets them in the mood, whether they're ready to stand for it or not. Yeah. Well, and I'm wondering if so. Okay, more research is needed, obviously. So I'm just kind of spitballing here. But I think one of the reasons why you may want to like get that washcloth soaked in the male goats pheromones and stuff um, for your lady goats, if you're trying to um, be able to take them somewhere, like say for a driveway breeding or a boarding breeding or something, and you don't want to have to pay for a bunch of days. Um, I think that what the pheromones do, even if they don't cause ovulation per se, is they make the signs that your female goat is in heat stronger because sometimes yeah, your female goats sense. can go into heat and it's hard to tell, like, you know, you're like getting down there, like with a, you know, magnifying glass, trying to see changes, you know, like in the <laughs> vulva and whatnot. And that can be really frustrating because some goats yeah. go stand by the, the male goat fence and scream their heads off. Whereas yeah. others just go on about their business, ovulating very silently, but ovulating nonetheless. Um, yeah. but it does make them hard to pair up if you don't, you know, just stick your goats together for a whole month and hope for kids, you know? Right. Um, so I, I do think in my experience that that has worked in that sense. Yeah. If I wonder too, if it's just kind of like, um, obviously goats are very driven by scent. If with this study that Mm -hmm. indicates that even like, you know, completely different direction here, not 
breeding related, but you can go get your goat kids despotted, bring them back. All mom smells is burnt hair. She's not smelling that they're her goats anymore. And they say to rub the kid on her backside Mm -hmm. to make her smell like them again, uh, or make them smell like her again. And she'll kind of get it. Um, I haven't had a goat reject their kids after despotting this last one. This last one, she was very confused at first, but then she started smelling their butts and it was all good. Mm -hmm. Um, But sometimes there is a bit of a learning curve there. So um, I think the fact that they're smell driven, maybe even could just be that they're getting used to that goat smell too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, kind of getting them in the mood. They're they're getting, (laughs) it's their goat foreplay. Maybe, I don't know. (laughs) Like, Ooh, this guy smells good. Let me cozy up next to him. Um, So yeah, it's, those are all really interesting theories for sure. Yeah. Um, but Jeremy Smith, who is a neuroendocrinologist at the university of Western Australia in Netherlands is hopeful that the identification of one pheromone in goats will pave the way for identification of pheromones in other species. So, um, he said that they know the basic chemical structure in goats. Um, if they know the basic chemical structure in goats, then they can search for and test similar compounds in like sheep and cows. So this research has implications across other areas of agriculture, agriculture, which is mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. We, and that's really comes down to finding those active pheromones, um, that make female animals fertile. Um, that's very important information for humans that raise livestock because female sheep receive hormone treatments, kind of like you were talking about, Mm -hmm. um, to make sure they are in rut for breeding. I know somebody's talked to me about when we were talking about breeding fancy about hormones you can use on your cows to get them in heat around the same time. So, you know, you're not trying to do AI like three or four separate times in a month. If you have a couple of cows, um, So that is something that is used already, but I'm sure it could get a little better if we have more information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, cause using pheromones would be cheaper and less yeah. invasive than injecting yeah. hormones in them for sure. I mean, because all, I mean, all medical intervention has risks of some kind, not that it's all bad or anything, but you know, every, every time we stick a needle on your animals and you're opening up an avenue for bacteria and things like that. So if you can make it so you're only doing that when you need, um, you know, uh, vaccinations or things like that for preventative maintenance and not having to do it just to breed. That's a game changer. Yeah, for sure. And maybe one day this could add to like, you know, a a scent for human pheromones, (laughs) not that we'd be wearing the goat pheromone, but, um, Mm. a human pheromone. And there are some things out there like from companies that tote that they use like a pheromone enhancer or something like that. Um, but it sounds like at least at the time of this article, they hadn't really nailed that down yet. And that might actually help with fertility in humans too. If we yeah. figure out how some of that works. Oh. So yeah, that's, that's all the fun goat stink talk we have for today. So <laughs> just one more thing real quick before we go. The, the human application has some interesting like things that just kind of like cropped up in my head. Like, so the closest thing that I can think of to, uh, like a cologne or whatever that, um, you know, humans use would be like X body spray. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I mean, so at really high levels, it's awful. I mean, I have a teenage boy. Thankfully he doesn't care about X body spray. (laughs) There was a whole house that smelled like it all the time. Um, but I do go into the school often and you can smell it when the boys are using it. Um, but like, I'm wondering if, you know, like having a cologne that could be a pheromone inducer like that, like, would it be sort of like, um, like a magic, you know, like potion that tricks somebody into wanting to be with you or, yeah, or like uh, fall in love with you, you know, because the smell created, you know, like an internal reaction, um, that you were familiar with. And so it caused that attraction, but then when they stop spraying it, you're like, Oh wait, I don't like this person. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can definitely, I think there are some studies about, um, 
needing to like the smell of your partner. And sometimes hormonal birth control can change the way your partner smells to you if you stop it or start it. Oh, Um, interesting. I've definitely seen some stuff around that. And they're probably very careful with that sort of thing too, because if you're lucky enough to be very regular on your cycle, if you have something that disrupts that cycle repeatedly or confuses your ovulation, that probably has some bad impacts to you too, I would assume. And then you're just kind of ovulating at random. And then you're having your period at random. Like that's probably really dramatic, but I think we were so intelligently designed that you got to be careful with how you're messing with some of that stuff for sure. (laughs) (laughs) And humans are a little more complex than goats. I think there's definitely a, a physical attraction and emotional attraction that plays into it as well. But anything that helps, you know, why not look into it? Just proceed with caution. Like yeah. they say on Jurassic park, just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think the main application for this in humans would be, um, like to help prevent the need for invasive hormone treatment, um, like for fertility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, or even maybe that- it's like a type of Viagra. Too. Yeah. So like, <laughs> so from that perspective, I think it would be a good use for it, but I, I definitely don't want perfume companies to necessarily get a hold of it. <laughs> no, gosh. Could you imagine it's, it was already creepy enough in my college town going to bars. I don't need manipulation through scent. <laughs> <laughs> manipulation through scent. <laughs> yeah. You got your beer goggles on, but what about like pheromone goggles? That could be dangerous, right? (laughs) Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm cutting myself off from this conversation. (laughs) No, it was good. I thought this was fun. I hope, I hope all of you guys enjoyed, enjoyed it as well. And, um, come join our Facebook group and chime in with us. Um, because I'm sure that there's some extra conversation to be had about this topic and, uh, Goat breeders, we'd love to hear what you have found in your goat yeah. pheromoning. Pheromoning. <laughs> yeah. And if I could not locate any follow up research on this, but if somebody else is aware of follow up research on this, please send it to us because I'd like to do a follow up episode if that information is available. I just cannot for the life of me find it. So <laughs> if you have it, send it our way. We would appreciate that very much. Yeah. And just be sure to, to leave us a review over on Apple podcasts to possibly be entered into a monthly drawing for a coffee mug that is not, and will never be in the shop. If you don't have Apple podcasts, you can also call and leave us a voicemail with a review that enters you into the contest as well. Yep. And that phone number, if you need it is 401-426-FARM. So super easy to remember. I got to memorize now. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad one of us does though. And make sure that you take a look at the show notes. You'll find links for our social media, the article we discussed, um, merch shop, and a bunch of other fun things in there. Yeah. So until next time, drink, farm, and give zero plus. We drink things, we farm things, we drink and farm things.